Uh, terminal advantages, Garden, Garden City. Again, as I talked about at the beginning, it's the single largest uh, container operation, biggest con single container terminal in the United States. Size doesn't mean anything if you don't do all those other things that can, uh, that, that, that can impact the supply chains well and efficiently. Again, we have all major carriers at, uh, at our terminal. It affords us a great deal of flexibility when you have all 22 made major global carriers coming through one terminal, it's one system, there's no leaving one terminal going to another terminal that, that you see in a lot of other ports around the uh, U.S. where there's multiple terminals in those port areas. So it allows for definitely for higher trucker productivity, uh, certainly lower drage costs when the average uh, trucker is getting six to eight turns a day, depending upon where the distribution centers are that are located in, in the greater Savannah area. And uh, having our own labor there certainly increases the flexibility as well. Again, we are the owner and operator of, of the port as opposed to just being more of, of, of a landlord port, which is typically the case in most ports in the United States. So again, I talked about the balance of the exports and imports before in uh, 2010. Interesting enough, our exports exceeded our imports at about 52 to 48 percent. That is still pretty much holding true for this year as well, although the imports begin are beginning to creep up more percentage-wise. So probably by the end of the year, that balance will be uh, fairly evenly split. But what that says in terms of its attractiveness to the carriers is for every import load that they're bringing in, they're getting an export, they're getting a revenue paying export load back out. So in terms of less empty repositioning and all those kind of things, it's very, very attractive for the carriers to use our port as well. So again, another reason for the uh, growth of uh, the port. Better equipment <laughs> utilization, less empty miles, et cetera. I uh, was asked to talk a little bit about what, what our top exports and, uh, and export markets and import markets are. So this is just a quick breakdown in terms of those, uh, in terms of those spreads. You can see uh, Asia pretty much continues to be for exports, uh, our, our head haul trade along with the MED. Major moving commodities moving out of, um, out of, the, out of the port are really that forest products, paper products, uh, kale and clay cotton, chemicals, and sort of a new export commodity the last couple of years that's been coming on very, very strong is the grain that's moving in containers, moving down from the uh, Midwest in hopper cars, being transloaded into containers, and then used for the uh, export trades. So again, this gives a breakdown in 2010 as far as the exports. In terms of the imports, you can see it's pretty much, uh, it's, it's Asia. It is heavily uh, centric on freight coming out of China. It comprises probably about 60, 65%. We see easily that China is going to continue to be the engine for at least another eight, uh, eight to 10 years. While there is certainly some shifting down to Southeast Asia and out to India, they have a long time to go that from a capacity, from a production capacity standpoint, that they're going to be able to, uh, to, to be able to keep up with uh, demand. So China's going to continue to be the uh, end engine for a while to come. Uh, top commodity exports, I talked about that before, the wood pulp, the paper, food, clay, retail goods. Um, you know, I, Chris will talk more about the food, but the Port of Savannah is the largest export port in the United States for refrigerated goods. Uh, most of that is poultry, and most of that is going to uh, China. Probably about 90, 95 percent of those exports are uh, poultry here today. On the import side, a little bit more sp spread out. You can see that furniture and, and retail goods uh, com comprise the most. Obviously, furniture being the single largest import commodity coming into the United States, even with the uh, housing uh, crisis that's been going on the last couple of years, which has really dramatically hurt uh, hurt furniture sales, but it's still the number one commodity coming out. And Mark, I'm sure we'll uh, we'll talk about that in his and and retail goods, hardware goods. We have the DIY giant and great Georgia partner Home Depot here to talk about that. A little bit about the Savannah Harbor expansion project, and it was talked uh, today. In a lot of the uh, comments that you heard out in the main out in the main ballroom, from Jack Wells to uh, to, to to Governor Deal to Mike Mayoris, etc., the project uh, deepening. We are awaiting what we call the record of decision. That is a U.S. Army Corps of Engineers term that 
We hope to expect to get this as, uh, by spring of 2012, probably no later than about July of next year. So it's been a, uh, a long fought for, uh, worked on project, actually starting in 1999 when a WERDA bill, the Water Resource Distribution Act, was passed by Congress in 1999, allowing the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to study the deepening uh, from 42 feet at mean low water that there is here today to uh, a future depth of 48 feet. So again, uh, just uh, it's been 12 years in uh, the making. We've had uh, a tremendous amount of uh, transparency in the process. Been a lot of stakeholders who've been involved in the project from the get-go. We are very, very confident that we are gonna get a uh, decision in our favor. Certainly believe that the science is, is on our side and we look forward to uh, getting that record of decision so we can commence with, it, with, the, uh, with the funding and, and the deepening as fast as possible. Um, one thing I didn't talk about is uh, we're also blessed with a great tide where we have a seven and a half foot tide. So when you have that twice a day, we're able to get to 49, 50 feet on the high tide now, which allows us to be able to accommodate the, uh, the, the larger ships. But it's really important for commerce moving forward, and that's all what we've been talking about here today, that we eliminate these uh, artificial speed bumps with uh, draft restrictions. It's gonna be important because what we're being told by all the major carriers in the world, that once the Panama Canal expansion is completed, really the workhorse uh, vessel that's gonna be coming to the U.S. East Coast from the east-west trades are gonna be in that 8,000 to 8,500 TE range. They'll continue to be smaller vessels that are gonna work uh, obviously from other trade lanes, but the main east-west trade lanes coming into the U.S. East Coast are gonna be in that 8,000 to 8,500 T range. Um, this is just some, some details on the Savannah Harbor expansion um, project here. You, you can just read through it. Again, uh, record of decision, awaiting it sp spring of 2012. Again, very, very confident uh, about getting a favorable record of decision and look forward to that construction start in 2012. And it'll be about a three, three and a half year project to, uh, to, to deepen the Savannah River. But clearly, uh, we need to be ready. We need to be ready for the larger ships coming through the Panama Canal. Again, they're already coming through here today. There's actually a picture of a CMA CGM ship. That is the 8500 that was coming up uh, the Savannah River. So obviously we're already handling him here today, but certainly uh, the, the, the focus and the push is on to eliminate that, uh, eliminate that draft restriction. Uh, I guess I would be remiss if I didn't talk about what we're doing real, real quickly on the environment. I won't spend uh, too much time on that here today, but it is just tremendously important to our organization. Everything that we're doing here today is uh, nothing. There's no federal mandate. There's no state mandate with everything that, that we're doing here here today on our terminals, which is substantial. Again, these, these are all self-initiated by the Georgia Ports Authority. In a couple highlights, we've electrified 21 out of our 23 cranes. It's basically eliminated 1.7 million gallons of diesel fuel per uh, year. We're recycling a tremendous amount of materials in all of our projects, et cetera. So we're just uh, trying to do that more and more with everything that we're doing. Also, we've, we've gone to uh, reefer racks for a lot of our, our export reefers, and that's eliminated at least about 600,000 gallons a year. And of course, with the new racks that we're putting in place now, it'll be close, closer to a million gallons a year of diesel fuel that's being saved. Uh, major U.S. port issues, things that are affecting us, things that are affecting ports in the United States. It is really, really important. We have an aging U.S. infrastructure. And Jack Wells talked about that today in his comments. It, it just you know, requires improvement. Obviously, with the uh, Obama mandate to essentially double the amount of exports in the next five years from this country, uh, it is possible, but our East Coast ports have to be ready. They have to be able to accommodate the uh, bigger ships, and very, very few can do it without tidal restrictions here today. So again, at stake, major investments in transportation facilities and services. Uh, increased passenger travel and global trade are pushing the transpa transportation sector to, it, to its limits. Uh, our highway infrastructure, rail infrastructure, port infrastructure all needs greater, greater investment. So again, there seems to be, uh, as everyone reads, there's a lack of consensus on what should be built and where, and all these things uh, just do nothing but slow down what, what are worthy projects. 
and in a no new taxes, uh, finding the necessary funds is, is going to be challenging always uh, moving forward without question. Again, that uh, concludes my remarks. We are, uh, we are ready today, building for tomorrow at the Georgia Ports Authority. And it is my pleasure to turn it over to your first speaker, Terry Bunch with Randy.